But what happens as believers is that if we get caught in the current of this world, we'll find ourselves associating with things that don't bear fruit. Let's go ahead and um and talk about uh, our focus for this morning. And it's Ephesians chapter 5 and I want to I want to read um down to verse 11. So we'll read verse 8 starting at verse 8 down to verse 11. We're building on everything we've been building on so far this week. And it says, "For you were once darkness. You were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord." Walk as children of light, those who are produced by light, offspring even of light. He says, for the fruit of for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. That's what we talked about yesterday. That last verse, verse 10, uh, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, making sure that we know that pleasing God is priority. Mm -hmm. Now. Today, look at verse 11, and he says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Mm -hmm. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Brothers and sisters, today, I want you to know that as we are walking in light, the fourth step is that there must be no fruitless fellowship. No fruitless fellowship. Well, just earlier in the week, we declared that we've got to be fruitful. We said on Tuesday that we've got to be fruitful. Uh, that's important as being light. Really in the fact that, um, and I think it's a good point to make, that nothing good happens without light. Nothing good grows in the absence of light. So light is necessary in order to be fruitful. But what happens as believers is that if we get caught in the current of this world, we'll find ourselves associating with things that don't bear fruit. And Apostle Paul is saying that you cannot have any fellowship with the things that are fruitless. This is speaking to, um, sometimes we think about fellowship, we think about uh, people. And it's true. We've got to be careful to distance ourselves uh, from those who have proven that they have no intention of being fruitful. There are some people that, uh, that will call you on the phone with conversation that's fruitless. You being light in the Lord, we have no time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, conversation that has no fruit. I don't have time for that. Uh, but what about, what about outside of those relationships? What about habits? What about thoughts? What about those things that we do that bear no fruit? Apostle Paul is saying, have no fellowship with it. He's saying, oh, you should not partake in those things in any way, shape, or form. I believe that this is so significant because um, there are two things that happens to those who bear no fruit. There are two things that happen. And this was alarming to me, and I hope that it would be alarming to you uh, that we as a community would make it, our, make it our business to bear fruit and not be fruitless. There are two things that happens to those who don't bear fruit. The first of which is that we discover in, in Mark chapter 11 is that, is that there was a fig tree that had much leaves but it had no fruit. In other words, it looked like it was healthy, but yet it was not bearing fruit. You know what happened to that tree? The Bible says that Jesus cursed that tree. So the person who does not bear fruit 
is a person that ends up cursed by Jesus. I don't want to be caught up in that. The second thing that happens to the person that doesn't bear fruit is that, is that in John chapter 15, Jesus describes um, himself as the true vine and his father as the gardener. Well, verse two, he says that his father cuts off any branch that doesn't bear fruit. Well, you say, oh, child, that that's just branches. Well, what you'll discover is that Jesus goes on later in chapter 15, and he says again that he's the vine and we are the branches. And so if I'm a branch that's coming off of Jesus and I don't bear fruit, I'm going to be cut off. That's right, Sister Metris. I'm going to be cut off by the Father. And so there are two things that happens to those who are fruitless. That's being cursed by Jesus and being cut off by the Father. I don't want to be involved in either of those. Could you imagine how challenging it would be uh, to find yourself before Jesus and you have lived a life that you thought was worthy of en entering into the kingdom and you say, Lord, I prophesied in your name. Lord, I, I healed people in your name. I preached in your name. I'm, I witnessed God in your name. And he says, depart from me. I didn't know you, you worker of iniquity. You see, that iniquity isn't things that's obvious. That's the things that are happening in darkness. And what he's saying is rather than uh, finding yourself getting caught up in those things that are hidden that you thought nobody saw, he said it's better that you expose those things because those things are fruitless and not fruitful. Let it be the decision in the hearts of the saints who are walking it out or adding feet to our faith that we decide that we won't have any fruitless fellowship. But instead, we will be fruitful. Father, we thank you today on this thriving Thursday. Father, knowing that you're good and your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures through all generations. And Father, we submit to it today. We ask you to forgive us of our sin. Father, cleansing us of all unrighteousness. And we thank you that you're faithful and just to do that very thing. There are things I did, things I said that did not align with your glory. Father, while they may not have been exposed to the public, Father, your light has exposed it in my heart. I thank you for your word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And Father, even shows us where we've been fruitless in our living. Father, today we repent and we declare that we change our mind, that we have no desire to live a life that's fruitless. We don't desire to be cursed as that fig tree or to be cut off by you. But Lord, we desire that if anything, you would cut us back so that we would bear even more fruit. Father, we want to be fruitful and not fruitless. So Father, instead of hiding and even tolerating sinful acts and fruitless deeds, Father, we will expose them with the light that you have placed inside of us. Father, you have called us to be light and we will carry out that calling in the earth. Father, this morning I saw a prayer request for Sister Daphne Cross. Father, I don't know what her need is, but Father, I pray that you would meet and exceed her need by your grace. You said it's in our weakness that your strength is made perfect. So Father, I declare and we declare that God, that it's done in the name of Jesus. And Father, not just her, but any person that's here, that's had that, that's under the sound of my voice and has a need today, Father, we pray that you meet it. And Father, that you reach them in their season right now. And Lord, as we close out this prayer, we pray as your son taught us and we say, Our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors lead us not into temptation but deliver us from all evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and all of god's children say amen 
Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks, senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast, where we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. I want you to take 60 seconds and reflect on today's devotional and ask yourself, do I have any fruitless fellowship? Am I fellowshipping with anything that's fruitless? If so, don't hide it. Don't tolerate it. Instead, expose it with the light that's in you. God bless you.